Enigmatic North America, Legends, Oddities, and Controversial History. Chapter 7, Episode 7, Did the Chinese Find America Before Columbus? On the outskirts of Albuquerque, New Mexico lies the Petroglyph National Monument. The park's beauty is amplified by the walking trail that allows visitors to appreciate the rock art that was left on the boulders centuries ago. One of the petroglyph panels that can be found at the park features some fascinating symbolism that researchers have proposed is ancient Chinese writing. Dr. John Ruskamp, the author of the book Asiatic Echoes, the Identification of Ancient Chinese Pictograms in Pre-Columbian North American Rock Art, has identified this panel and at least 20 others throughout the Southwest as matching various types of ancient Chinese script. In an email exchange I had with Dr. Russ Camp, he describes his methods for identifying a petroglyph that is a possible match to Chinese writing. Using the legal concept of substantial similarities coupled with the Jacquard Index of Similarity, a numerical value for a chance creation of the glyph under consideration is generated. Only items with a less than 5% chance probability of being independently created are added to the database. After the evaluation is complete, Dr. Ruskamp sends a photo of the petroglyph to an expert sinologist for an independent analysis to confirm or deny the matching similarities. Various experts such as David N. Kitely, PhD from UC Berkeley, Dr. Mao Bauchen from Capital Normal University of Peking, and others have assisted with this analysis. In Dr. Ruskamp's book, Asiatic Echoes, he identifies one petroglyph boulder as ancient Chinese characters Shan, Quan, Da, Ji, Da Jia and Gang. When read from right to left, beginning with the symbol Ji, Dr. Ruskamp and others have hypothesized that this petroglyph panel represented a story about a man, represented as Ji, honoring his superior or king, Da, with the sacrificial offering of a dog, Quan, with the dog next to the symbol of a tiger resting on a cauldron, Shan. Above Ji is Da Jia, the third Shang emperor of China. Ruskamp explains in his book that it was Dr. David N. Kitely who first pointed out this particular matching symbol to him. To the far right is a symbol that is interpreted as gung, which represents the ten celestial stems of Chinese script, as well as the name of the fifth king of the Shang dynasty. After discussing this subject with Dr. Ruskamp on the phone, I decided to post some images of the petroglyphs to Twitter. This brought forward a wave of response, both enthusiastic and skeptical. One petroglyph researcher named V that I'd been following and communicating with reached out to me and asked where she could learn more about this. After directing her toward Dr. John Ruskamp's work, she eventually got back to me with some skepticism. She would later tell me that she first would need to learn more about the ancient Shang Dynasty oracle bone and bronze inscription. After doing more research and pulling up two different databases of these ancient Chinese inscriptions from the Institute of History and Philology, and the Institute of Information Science, V was able to look through thousands of oracle bone and bronze characters. V, who is a native Chinese speaker, saw matching symbols on the boulder in Petroglyph National Monument. As V dug deeper, she started to compare the symbols that represented the kings of the earliest Shang Dynasty period. She came to the conclusion that she didn't agree with everything that Dr. Ruskamp had published, but she was in agreement with Dr. Ruskamp with the identification of Da Jia, Gang, and Ji, and the general matching symbols on the boulder at Petroglyph National Monument near Albuquerque. When I spoke with her on Zoom, she explained to me what really convinced her was Da Jia and Gang. In the case of the boulder in New Mexico, B sees too much systematic order for this to be a coincidence or from a different generation. The amount of matching symbols, especially the ones that match with the lineage of different kings on the boulder, has her convinced that this was created by one exploration group. V's paper is titled The Shang Dynasty Scripts and the Suspected Indus Scripts in the Southwest American Petroglyphs, and I highly encourage everyone to dive into it. This topic is likely going to be very controversial, but the case that Dr. Ruskamp and V make for early Chinese explorations of the Americas is quite captivating. Um, scroll it down to, uh, I, I need to say the yeah, D, picture D. Picture D, there are a couple of dajas uh, form in real, in real uh, oracle bone inscriptions. So the, this is the copy from the real. So this is the real dajas titles inscribed on oracle bone uh, inscription on Earth in China. So you can see Jia is a cross. Da is a person with uh, arm outstretched. Um, and then we have this right here. We yeah, have a cross. Yeah, and, this is the cross. This is a person with arm um, outstretched. Then, before, we, before we move on on this, where did you find these examples right here of the actual Chinese? Uh, we, uh, there are a couple of uh, databases. 
Okay. Uh, one, this database, uh, I use the two database. One is uh, developed by a university in Taiwan. Yep. One is developed by a university in China. Next one is just a gun. Yeah, you can see it look very similar, right? Very similar. A real very oracle bone. Yeah, in this table, uh, six real oracle bone. There are more forms. I can only have uh, put the uh, six here, but there are more forms of gun. But they are basically the structure uh, uh, similar. Right. J means when you worship, uh, you worship your, or you do the sacrificial offering ceremony, you are in the kneeling position. So you can see some characters facing right, some right. characters facing left. So in some dynasties, uh, they, they wrote in random way. So sometimes they put the character this, sometimes they put it that way. The most similar in first glance would be three. Yeah, you, if, four, yeah right. this one you can see. There is an, there are the, the person's knees and uh, feet. This one, as you can scroll down a little bit. Yeah, this one in our bone, the, we have to understand the, the, the meaning of the structure. Then we understand, we can understand the patriarchs or the characters better. So the, the, this, this character is called the uh, show. So in English, it means hunt or hunted animals. Uh, it can be a verb or, uh, or either a verb or a noun. So verb, uh, if it's a verb, it means hunt. If it's a noun, it means hunted animals. So the, the, this character is a combination of a, of a, a hunting tool. You can see the left one is a hunting tool. You can see it, it looks like a peach fork. Yeah, here is just the, just the reigning king, the king. So this is all of this in the in the table are the characters that are one in oracle bone in real oracle bone inscriptions. Yeah, so this, this is not that. Now, now Doctor Roskamp uh, depicted as that. I depicted as uh, one because if you look at Da Jia, there is a Da in Da Jia, right? I think this image is a little bit different from. Da in Da Jia's title. Um, but uh, anyway, Da means great, great person, great man. Da uh, refers to or can, can stand, uh, stand for um, king as well. So either way, if uh, either you depict it as a uh, Wang, character Wang or character Da, either way, both Wang and Da uh, was, was, were represented as a person image with uh, arms outstretched, which means this is a great person. This is a king, emperor. When you're saying you're saying a vase with this one, right? Not a vessel. Yeah, yes, it's a vessel. Like a with the Because uh, in Song Dynasty, they used the vessels to offer sacrifices. You believe that this has to do with a sacrifice because you believe that this animal has an arrow going through it and it's next to this uh, vase. Yeah, yeah vase. Can you, yeah. Can you explain uh, that? Utensil. You can see, uh, you can call it a utensil. So, because uh, the, the, I just explained the character. The character means hunt or hunted animal, right? Right. It's not this one. We just explained the, the right one, the, the, the right second, uh, left second one. It's a hunt or hunted animal. Then you see a, the, you see a animal with arrow into uh, its back. This is a hunted animal. And we also have an ancient book, which was written in East Han Dynasty, which called the Shuo Wen Jie Zi. This ancient book, uh, just analyzes analyzes uh, <clears throat> analyzes the, the ancient Chinese characters. So this book was written um, a little bit less than 2000 years ago. Yeah, what? you see. Yeah, right here. Two, yeah, two arms are reading two people. Uh, so, so the upper part uh, symbolized two people were reading hands to present, to worship. This is the meaning of this part. Then you look at the patriarchs. The patriarchs more symbol symbolic than the, the characters, but you still can see it looks like two people shoulder by shoulder, raising hands, even the legs a little bit up turned upward. 
so when you analyze the structure of a uh, of a Asian character, uh, the most important thing you you have to say if their structure if their structure is consistent. You don't have to say necessarily, oh, they are exactly the same or not. You have to analyze the structure. So the lo lower part is meaning is of this character is uh, uh, moving forward and the following one by one. And did you have the same analysis that Dr. Ruskamp originally had on this exact symbol? Because let's see here, is this the same? Because his symbology is a little bit different. This right? the symbology is... Uh, our carbon character for tiger. Got you. And you don't. Yeah, then, to... yeah the yeah. upper one is tiger. Yeah. See, so this is how tiger was written in real our carbon inscriptions. This is the image of tiger or the character of tiger in our carbon inscription. Then the lower one is a uh, utensil, you, which means you put a tiger inside the utensil to present. Actually, these two characters' meaning very similar. They both. Uh, symbolize present, but they are two different characters. So, so you, if you think, yeah, you look at the hieroglyphs. I don't see any tiger, uh, and I don't see a utensil at the bottom. So would it be fair to say that you agreed with Gong? You agreed with Dajia? You agreed uh -huh. with what else? And then what? What did yeah, you? Yeah, the the, the the kneeling one, the the person in the kneeling. Yeah, I agree with. I basically agree the the king because his de depiction is the uh, uh, da da and the king both stand for the king. So, yeah. Other than the, these, I yeah, I think this is a so so means present. So it means the same thing, but you disagreed yeah. on the exact symbology. Like he yeah, thought that yeah. this was. A, the tiger you were talking about the symbol i don't see i don't see any tiger in this pressure if the, the tiger because we had the tiger uh, forms in our ball. this topic has caused quite the controversy on twitter in july i had tweeted that there is good evidence that some of the petroglyphs featured at petroglyph national monument are of chinese origin and I linked to both Dr. Ruskamp and V's work in that tweet. I was retweeted by Dr. David Miano, who said, Why do people think that looking for similar patterns and nothing more constitutes research? In this book and video series, I really like to take both sides of the story. I saw this as an opportunity to allow Dr. Miano to give a proper analysis and a proper rebuttal to V's and Dr. Ruskamp's work. I responded to Dr. Miano asking for this rebuttal. His response back was that there were no arguments to rebut. Did I not express myself clearly in the first comment? The invitation is still open. I would love to hear an actual rebuttal from Dr. David Miano. So what do you all think? Are the similarities between ancient oracle script and these petroglyphs at Petroglyph National Monument in Albuquerque enough to convince you that these were created by Chinese explorers? Or do you think there's another explanation for this? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching Incredible History. You can read more about this topic in my book, Enigmatic North America, Legends, Oddities, and Controversial History. I'll have that linked in the comments and the description. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share with someone you think might find it interesting. And until next time, take care.